and I hope you enjoy looking at them as much as I do. I think it's exciting. Um, we're going to look at a lot of works of art, and I want you to focus on how you feel, not intellectually, not who painted it, not what school of art is it from, but a visceral, visceral reaction. How do you feel? What do you feel when you look at this art? What sensations are provoked? Um, what are you feeling? And I'll ask you to tell me those things. So this work, was anyone familiar with this before? I've never, I've never seen it before, but it was on a list of most famous paintings in the world. I've never seen it. It was painted in 1886. It's called Our Daily Bread by Andrew Zorn, and it's the artist's mother cooking for the harvesters. Now, what do you feel when you look at this painting? Exhausted. That's exactly what I would say. I don't feel that, but I, I'm energized. But any other reactions of Lonely. anything from the painting? Lonely. Sad. No. Good gosh. No. I'm going to sit down and talk to her. Down and talk to her. Okay, anything else? What I feel when I look at this painting is I feel this very hard path under my feet. I feel when I walk here, these weeds and grasses are all catching at my feet. The pot is hot. I feel when I walk past the pot on this hard path, I can feel the heat. Does anyone get any reaction like that? I feel a sense of hope from this. Maybe because of the freshness of the grass on okay. that side, the light, the way the artist is done the light. Uh, I don't feel that it's a depressing thing at all. I feel I like she's either. moving into a season of spring and refreshment. Yes. Plus, that's your feeling, and right. we had our feelings. Exactly. Right. Well, I, I like a lot of it. Exactly. <laughs> what I see is, I, I think I'm likening it to what's happening in the world in Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. And I see a very nah. lonely person yeah. Yeah. with the, I, I don't know if that's wheat or whatever, but they're very prolific in growing that. and. They're not going to be able to grow it the way they're going right now. Yeah. And so it's pretty um, pretty bleak. Mm -hmm. Well, my goodness. I thought this was a happy thing. I think I see it as bleak wanting to sit down and talk to her. That looks like a lovely place that I would love to go. And I probably okay. don't want to go do what they, they're they doing out there in the field. So, yeah, I'd sit and talk to the lady that's cooking the food. But it's, it's a lovely scene. It's funny that we all have yeah. all these different reactions. Sorry. The lady next to you had something. I was yes. just going to mention the posture gives yeah. you sort of a feeling of maybe that loneliness or yeah. that sort of sadness because it's not as open. Yeah, I, I feel she's definitely tired from the yeah. 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 All right, so that's our reaction to one, one thing. How about this photo? What do you feel when you look at this one? Damn. No, 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 no. Stephen King. A little scared. A little scared. So, me too. It makes me feel a little creepy, a little spooked. So, what the photographer said when he took the picture, he said, At the time, I felt a mix of fear, anxiety, and dread. Wow. Wow. I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get that. And we all feel happy. Yes, right? So, we're looking at a canvas, or we're looking at a piece of paper, or maybe we're looking at a photograph. So, how does it happen that this, how does it make me feel that way? Right. That's why we're colors. Color. 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 So, why is it that I get that energy from art? Uh, how is it that I'm moved by seeing where BJ go, like her paper mache pig in the tutu. I yeah. love that thing. <laughs> or, you know, all the other things that, you know, we had the critique here today. So how do I get those feelings of joy and happiness, or maybe the photograph we just showed of the trees in the mist? How, how does that make me feel spooked and creeped? And, yeah, it didn't mean at all. And how about this? I, I think this That's is a rather easy. happy, That's all the yeah. yarn and crochet. Yeah. It's the colors, it's the 3D, That's you can feel the texture. Yeah. For an art exhibit. <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> so this is based on a character, and I don't know, I forget the novel. But He's confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you almost feel this, yeah. what Part three he's flower. done here? Do you feel... The texture on that? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. 
<laughs> feels silly. <laughs> and this is apparently Louis Armstrong's. It says it's his dog named Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Jazz. Yeah. What's that? Jazz. What's that? Jazz. What's that? That looks Paint like a hair sponge. I only see the dog a little bit in there. <laughs> but it's a very happy thing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also with Louis Armstrong, I mean, jazz is all over. Or, it's all over. Ooh, ooh, and how about this? Yes. Oh, oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, Just oh, lovely, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I love that. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. That's yeah. perfect. And you know, this is uh, this is an image on a screen, and it's, so we're getting, you know, definitely the feeling of movement, but nothing's move me, moving. Explosion. Yeah. So previously, I worked in the field of medical science, and I've always been interested in science. Great input. But now, I'm not working anymore outside the home, outside my studio. Um, so I want to focus on how am I getting these feelings? What is the science behind here? You know, if I look out in the parking lot, I'm not getting the same feelings that I'm getting from any of this artwork. So how is that happening? Um, why is it that it affects me so? You know, the other day I was feeling kind of down, and so I spent the morning in the garden, and I spent the afternoon painting. And you know what, I felt so much better. The next day I was myself again. So what's that connection? What, what is the connection between what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling? So first the artist creates the painting or the sculpture or the photograph. Later on it's perceived by one of us or someone. The connection is called mirror neurons. Some uh, let's see, mirror neurons were discovered by scientists in the brains of monkeys in the 1990s, and they're presumed to exist in all primates, including humans. <coughs> it seems that when we watch some, someone performing an action, corresponding neurons in our brains light up, causing us to feel as if we're doing the same thing. That's one reason why we enjoy sports so much. We enjoy watching them. Mirror neurons cause spectators to feel as if they're doing what the athletes are doing. Another example, if a person were to watch another person skipping rope and then skip rope themselves, aspects of that person's brain wouldn't know the difference between watching and doing. When you observe a profound piece of art, you are potentially firing the same neurons as the artist did when they created the painting making new neural pathways and stimulating a sense of inspiration. So that's what it's doing for us when we look in the art, when we look at the art, which to me is sort of a huge concept. Now let's talk about another aspect of perception. When artists use their hands to make art, they create visual details and qualities, such as a brush stroke in a painting or a chisel mark in a sculpture. These details and qualities are called graphic artifacts, and when we observe them, they cause mirror neurons to fire, which then create an imitative experience in our brain. So you can see the hand here, the mark of the fingers, how this was shaped. I don't know, is that a tool, Joe, that made the yes. lines there? But that is pretty. you can feel your hands on it, can't you? Maybe no, you I can. can, I can. <laughs> Aww. And like Deanne's house, I could feel my hands on her little troll houses. I could feel the coolness and the smoothness of the concrete. And this one, not quite the same, but I wanted to include it to remind me to talk about that. Remember we did Alita's Bundles? Mm -hmm. And can you feel the softness of the feather? Do you remember the scent of the white sage? Do you remember the leather strap, how that felt in your hand? Is anybody, does this, does this bring, ring true with any of you? Whether we're conscious of it or not, the body-brain system interacts with art in complex ways and mirror neurons appear to be a contributing factor. This research is fairly new as research goes. It's been done in the past 20, 30, 
20 to 30 years or so, and it's not totally understood even within the scientific community. So you know what that means? To me, that means we get to make our own theories. But I'm not. Everything I'm talking to you, I have a bibliography if you're interested. OK. Back to this painting that had so many varied uh, reactions. There's another response in our brains when we see a beautiful piece of art. It has to do with something called embodied cognition. While looking at a piece of art, your brain is trying to make sense of what it is seeing. So here, you know, all these lines and splotches, my brain is telling me that it's grass, right? Mm -hmm. Embodied cognition is the sense of being drawn into the painting. The brain turns the actions and movement in the art into actual emotions. In this painting, I could feel the hard earth path and the weeds grabbing <coughs> at my legs. This is embodied cognition. Now in a Jackson Pollock, this next one is not a Jackson Pollock, mm -hmm. but can you feel the dripping? Mm -hmm. You can feel how these strokes were made, can't you? Mm -hmm. So I used to look at abstract art and, and not know what it was about. But I think sometimes maybe it's not about, I don't even remember the title of this, Maybe it's about the feeling I'm getting, not about particularly representing something. Mm -hmm. Mirror neurons are responsible for embodied cognition. Movement in our limbs, whether it's walking, running, or creating art, starts in the brain and then flows to the limbs. Observing the action requires the information to flow in the opposite direction. <coughs> inward from the image you're seeing to the brain. So that bi-directional flow is what's captured in the mirror neurons concept. And it's thought that this is what gives that extra vividness to art appreciation. I was fortunate enough to see this <coughs> painting in a gallery, and it stopped me in my tracks. Um, anybody get any feelings from it? Look, at, look forward to Thanksgiving. <laughs> For me, I was amazed at how beautiful these turkeys are. I, I didn't know turkeys were white, but anyway. Um, I'm amazed at how I can tell how soft these feathers are. I can tell that the sun is very low in the sky, and it's causing a shadow right here where the turkeys are, and you can see the sun in the distance. The grass is kind of long and it feels kind of cool compared to where the sun is. Anybody have any of those feelings? <laughs> no. Now, what do you feel about this? <laughs> any feelings associated with this? Yeah. Well, he looks very silky. Everybody. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Deanne. You want to touch him. You want to right? Him you yes. can feel how soft his fur is, right? Yeah. yeah. And hopefully he doesn't. He's got and hopefully he doesn't bite. Researchers in the area of neuroscience believe that creative pursuits help to build connections in our brains. Drawing seems to be particularly helpful. Yeah. Because when we draw, it involves an ima your imagination. It forces the brain to create a mental image of the subject or the idea. And there's increasing evidence that art enhances brain function by impacting brainwave patterns, emotion, emotions, and the nervous system. Observing art can stimulate the creation of new neural pathways and ways of thinking. In fact, I read an article that said Yale is now requiring medical students to participate in an art class teaching visual, visual literacy. By participating in structured observation of art, skills are improved in the area of physical examination of patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
What feeling do you get from this piece of jewelry? I want to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> and the flow. I mean, this is hard metal, right? Or blue. And I don't know what that is. Is that pearl or something? Pearl. Creating and viewing art can also raise serotonin levels. You know, serotonin's the hormone, stabilizes our mood, feelings of well-being and happiness. It enables brain cells and other nervous system cells to communicate with each other. Also helps with sleeping, eating, and digestion. This is very sort of zen or something, huh? I don't know if it's a bracelet or a necklace or... But it's very calming, right? It doesn't look as soft, though. Yeah. The other one was more common. That's, yeah, that's soft. Oh, that's Painting also has been demonstrated to, pro to provide cognitive benefits, boost memory recollection skills, and sharpens the mind. Studies show people who frequently write, paint, and draw have less chance of developing memory loss illnesses as they age. <laughs> I, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Drawing not only releases endorphins, which are the feel-good chemicals that helps build new pathways in the brain. Is that not lovely? <laughs> Studies have shown that creating art stimulates the release of dopamine. Dopamine is released when we do something pleasurable. It makes us feel happier and more productive. An interesting fact is that artists have structurally different brains compared with non-artists. A study of brain scans revealed artists had increased neural matter in areas relating to fine motor movements and visual imagery. You can really feel the wind. Can you? Yes. I love this. As we all know from experience, a creative act can help focus the mind, and it has been compared to meditation due to calming the effects on the brain and the body. Even gardening or sewing releases dopamine. Creativity reduces anxiety, depression, and stress, and it can also help process trauma. I just like this collage, I guess it's a collage. Mm -hmm. um, it's not by the artist. I'm going to quote an artist right now and tell me if you can relate to what she's saying. Her name is Ivana George. She says, I, entered, I enter an altered state of consciousness when creating my artworks. The act of creation surely affects my brain chemistry. I'm normally an easily distracted personality. However, when I get in a good mental flow of the creative process, I enter a state of hyper-focus. My perception of time becomes warped, and time quickly slips away. Every good artist has self-doubt. This is a normal condition which helps push us to create better artworks. With self-doubt comes hesitation, and for some artists, creative paralysis. However, in this altered state of consciousness, I am able to free myself from doubt and to become more experimental. I am able to generate innovative ideas that do not surface at other times. I am in an open state of mind where I am able to take creative risks without judgment of the possible outcomes. This state of mind usually results in better artworks and the most productive use of my time. Have you been there in that flow? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? My husband says so. <laughs> what are you doing in there for the past three hours? Right? Dinner was ready an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> just, just five more minutes, right? <laughs> My brushes are still wet. I still have paint. <laughs> Viewing art engages areas of the brain involved in processing emotion and those that activate our pleasure and reward systems. The brain's default mode network, that's the area associated with Internal, uh, internally oriented thinking, like daydreaming, or thoughts about the future, or retrieving memories, that is also activated. So here's a quote that I found to go with this picture. It's from Ifzal Ibrahim. Artists not only preserve a visual reminder of a memory, but they also record the emotions associated with that memory. When we view the image, whether it is one from our own memory or someone else's, we tap into that remembered emotion and relate it to our own past experiences. 
So does this picture of these happy little friends make you remember maybe something from your past? Right? I don't know anything about where this was or anything, but we can all relate to this, right? Okay. All right, as some of you are aware, Art is used as a therapeutic tool to improve, improve focus and communication skills. Creating art stimulates the senses and allows for the expression of experiences that may be too painful to verbalize. Creating art can also improve self-esteem, because we all know that feeling of accomplishment and happiness when a project is completed. So this artist has called this my anxiety. And we've all known that feeling, I'm guessing, when you feel anxious, it's like your whole body, his head is moving, his arms are moving, he's all red, he's got the squiggly lines all over. It looks <clears throat> like he turned his anxiety into a Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I'm that, maybe not anxious, but when I'm that upset, I feel like a Power Ranger, like anything in my path, right? Research from 2016 found that 45 minutes of creating art in a studio setting with an art therapist, therapist significantly lowered cortisol levels. Cortisol is the hormone that helps your body respond to stress. The results were the same whether you people identified as artists or non-artists. So just being in there with the art therapist for 45 minutes, creating art helped to reduce stress. This painting is another one I saw in a gallery, and again, it stopped me in my tracks. Yes. Um, the fact that this floor is so smooth and shiny, and I can feel how it feels to remove that first layer over there. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Contemplation, observing, observing, and taking in beauty all stimulate pleasure centers within the brain while increasing blood flow by up to 10% in parts of the brain. This can lead to an elevated state of consciousness, well-being, and better emotional health. In fact, the blood flow increases for viewing a beautiful painting just as much as it increases when you look at somebody you love. So, does anyone get that same thing from this feeling, uh, same feeling from this painting? I thought it was an insane song when I first looked. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the guy in the back corner. Yeah. Yeah. In the He's back getting corner. his tools ready. No, but I didn't, I've got a head here, so all I saw was the back corner initially. <laughs> and anyway, the guy's I, a little bit <laughs> <short. laughs> Obviously, I have a different, and I have a different taste in art, but I think this is positive. Well, I didn't say it wasn't lovely. <laughs> Okay, this one. Again. Oh, that makes me really happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, aside from the subject matter, I, I'm picking paintings that have spoken to me from a gallery. Now, this one, okay, I know the subject matter, but I saw this in the gallery, and when I walked in, I was looking at the ceiling and the walls to see how they were lighting this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look what the yeah, Goya the has done yeah. with the light. Okay, yeah. it's, it's a gruesome thing. He, he, he was not happy, I don't think, because he painted a lot of gruesome stuff. But the way he has used this light is just breathtaking. That's amazing. And what, do you have a visceral reaction to this at all? Creepy. Right. Yes. Karen? I love that. That's one of my favorite pieces. Yes. I've seen that myself just the way that veil comes down you feel like it could blow in the wind in any second. right i remember seeing a statue somewhere in a gallery and it was a whole body covered in a veil like this and i wanted to touch it but i thought it'd be shot or jailed or something. you know you you can't believe that this is stone or marmite whatever it is the delicate flowers See, Karen, we find that one creepy, and, and we both felt that the forest was very calming. That, that, <laughs> that I would run away from and run straight into that forest. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I did not think of today. Something I, I thought I 
thought it would make it too long, but maybe some other time we can have this discussion. From what I've read and prepared for this, and hearing your reactions, for instance, there are artists who I look at their work and they speak to me. Whether it's the color they use, I don't know, but I am at one with that artist and their work, I feel. So, what makes that feeling? I think it must be some type of shared something. Is it the way our brains work? Is it our vision? Is it some shared experience? I don't know, but as you're saying, you know, this gives you the creeps. I don't know. <laughs> and so this, I think, is Moses. You can look at his muscles and the veins in his arms and, and the hair and the way this flows. How they, how they do that, I don't know. I think it's Michelangelo's. Yeah, I think it's... The muscles and everything. Moses by Michelangelo. So to me, it, it's, you know... And what is this name? Oh. <laughs> Okay, so part of the yeah. enjoyment yeah. of yeah. art is all the feelings we receive during the beach. As water on the side. Let me read you two quick quotes. One is by Arthur from Howard Pyle, a 19th century illustrator. He says, art is the expression of those beauties and emotions that stir the human soul. Uh, w. Somerset Maugham, the author, he says, art is a manifestation of emotion, and emotion speaks a language that all may understand. That's true, right? So let me just show you, um, sometimes when I am preparing a painting, a collage, whatever I'm doing, I feel that I don't have emotion in there. Sometimes I'm just doing it to see if I can do it, just to see what happens. Um, and I think this Escher, you've seen a lot of his work. I don't feel like maybe he's trying to include emotion in his work unless it's surprise or maybe a bit of confusion. Um, so I don't think every time an artist is trying to put emotion into their work. I think sometimes it's about perspective or technique, and that's the focus. And, and maybe that's true here. I, I don't know. Um, that's awesome. So, <laughs> you know, if you want to put your emotions into your art, first you have to get in touch with your emotion. Peter Max was very happy, I think, when he did this. Look at the colors he's using. Um, so you can use color to express your emotion. This is called men melancholy. Look at the yeah. color colors. Yeah. 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 So this is all bright colors, and isn't life wonderful? And this is oh my god, right? <laughs> so the colors used here certainly the subject matters a little different. All right, we can also oh, use light. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So this is very lovely, but it, it's dark. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this, is, yeah. this, this is a similar subject matter, mountains, but it's very different look to it. Now, granted, it's a painting and not a photo, but very different feel, right? I thought there was a lot more clarity in the what you call dark. I didn't dark say it that as dark at all. Yeah, no. Serena, no. God, it's it's Serena. Serena. light me with Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. So this I included, I didn't include a comparison. I think the light is what you're supposed to see in yeah. this photo. Yeah, Coming through the trees yeah. to me, um, the photographer used oh. artists to create something very is it hopeful or happy? Hope. 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 That, that was exactly what I came up with. All right, we can also use texture. 
So, um, my favorite. so the Starry Night, you know, um, there's some uh, some places that said this expresses confusion. Uh, no, to me it, it says lovely, and he enjoyed what he was painting, and he was having time. Now, so the texture here is. I will leave you with hopefully a feeling of peace and some information. <laughs> <laughs>